Hello, folks. Everyone is talking about artificial intelligence. Powerful chatbots are bringing about dramatic changes in human-machine interaction. But that's not what machine learning is about. In this video, you'll discover how machine learning will change the development of automotive electronics. My name is Baska Van Amali. I'm a principal assessor and trainer at Kugler Mark & Company, a management consulting firm under the umbrella of UL Solutions. As lead of a sub-working group, I have been heavily involved in the development of the machine learning engineering standard for the upcoming Automotive Spice 4.0. The real strength of machine learning is how quickly it identifies patterns. In automotive electronics, this ability is a huge asset. This is because applications and functional software, but also sensors and actuators, benefit from machine learning's ability to recognize patterns faster than humans. Essentially, machine learning is a form of artificial intelligence that is designed to make devices smarter. We need these capabilities for advanced driver assistance systems, or autonomous driving, but it has its uses also in other systems, for instance, predictions regarding wear and tear. The machine learning standard tells you how to use machine learning based applications reliably and safely when developing automotive electronics. It complements and deepens the application of automotive spice. Thus, the standard provides methods that can support quality development and with that a basis for functional safety, SOTIV and cybersecurity. In this video, we'll talk about three important aspects of machine learning. Number one, we'll start with a brief look at how machine learning works. Number two, after understanding the technology, we'll turn to the machine learning engineering this is the practical application of machine learning in the development of high-performance automotive electronics. Number three, with this knowledge, we can then have a brief look at the machine learning aspects of Automotive Spice 4.0. But before that, we need to discuss a few basic terms and distinctions. The first issue is how artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning differ from one another. To explain this, I have prepared a diagram. If you look at the literature, you will find a lot of different explanations and categorizations of artificial intelligence. We are using the following in this context, which is relating to existing applications. Artificial intelligence is an umbrella term. The currently hotly discussed chatbots belong to this category also. They revolve around a so-called foundation model, a pre-trained language model based on a huge neural network that has been trained using large volumes of text data, typically based on unsupervised learning techniques. By drawing on this corpus of data, chatbots can generate answers to questions posed by humans. To do this, AI uses statistical probability. In the middle circle, we have machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. Here, algorithms are created on the basis of provided data. These algorithms are used to make machines, for example, application software or components, more powerful. For example, in the case of automotive electronics, machine learning makes it possible to recognize and interpret traffic signs. The innermost circle, deep learning, is a subset of machine learning. Here, algorithms are more complex and so-called neural networks are used, which simulate the structure of neurons in our brain. Now we have these definitions, we can turn to the first aspect. Number one, how important is the technology made possible by machine learning? Machine learning relies on three elements and approaches. I've prepared another diagram to show this. The starting point is a problem we would like to solve with machine learning. 
it should be a problem where patterns can be used. For this problem, we collect representative data. The developers, or if it is more complex, the organization, have to collect large amounts of data, such as traffic signs. Now the algorithm comes into play. It translates the given unstructured information from a dataset into a standardized format. From a machine learning engineering perspective, it's important to understand that no human has programmed the software. The algorithms optimize and refine themselves as part of the training process. They use this process to approximate the behavior of meaningful patterns and to learn these meaningful patterns from examples. There's not only one algorithm, however, but countless ways to achieve this. The role of the machine learning engineer is to select the most suitable candidate for further use. In essence, algorithms distill instructions independently from datasets. This is why the process is called machine learning. Algorithms teach themselves how to structure the given data into information. For the training to produce the desired result, algorithms are told how to interpret the environment from an engineering standpoint. In our example, traffic sign recognition, the algorithm may detect patterns by analyzing color distribution and linking this to the most probable traffic sign names. This training is an iterative process. The engineers expose the algorithm to data and check the outputs. Machine learning engineers check the outputs regularly. Are they already able to structure the training data and assign it to the names of the traffic signs? If necessary, the algorithms are refined with additional training input. This is done until it results in a robust model. So, what we have here is an R&D method based on trial and error cycles. The model is an asset that contains all the information. This model can then be implemented in the application software. For example, a model can contain a decision tree that tells us how to link image colors to different traffic signs. The model is verified against independent data set to ensure that you do not train the model against the data, but against the possible situations in the actual environment. Because the software was not written by a human being, it's like a black box in which algorithms deliver a result, the model. However, understanding the structure of this model would be far too strenuous. So the challenge we face is that we have to write software that can be relied on to come up with a safety critical system, even though we do not know how it works. From a quality assurance perspective, this is unacceptable, which brings us to the second section. Number two, what's required in machine learning engineering? Introducing machine learning models to car software and the back end presents us with a new challenge, not only when it comes to quality, but especially in terms of functional safety and cybersecurity. This is because the specific development processes of machine learning. Conventional processes based on standards like Automotive Spice don't work with machine learning. In conventional development, you describe requirements. What do you want the software to do? Then you design the architecture, a solution that shows you how to set up the software to provide corresponding functions. And finally, for each unit, you define the details that need to be implemented in the code. Based on these different levels of detail, you run a series of tests. With machine learning, there's no such formal testing. Once the developers are satisfied that the result meets the predefined criteria, the algorithm is tested and released. Verifying and validating machine learning is therefore mostly based on data labeling, training, anti-biasing and ensuring KPIs are met. From a quality assurance perspective, we need a reliable and systematic approach. We solve this issue by addressing the identification of the requirements, the definition of the architecture, the training and verification, 
and testing process, as if they are rings of an onion. This onion illustrates the required sequence and dependencies. At the heart of the onion, we see the algorithm. This has been configured for the desired functionality by the machine learning engineer. For example, customizing the algorithm allows you to control the number of neural connections, so-called nodes. If the algorithm has to be updated, it will require retraining. Together, the rings represent the trained model. The testing of the model has an impact on these rings of the onion. Since the model is based on training data, obviously data quality is a key issue. In the diagram, we see that there is a separate process addressing the data. We can see how machine learning engineering works in practice by looking at the new standard for machine learning. Number three. What structure is the Automotive SPI standard for machine learning engineering based on? The processes used for software artifacts created by machine learning are the same as software processes. As a result, the Automotive SPI standard is based on software engineering processes. The requirements for the software to be created are formulated in the Software Engineering 1 requirements process as is the case for all software used in automotive electronics. To do this, relevant system requirements are converted into a set of software requirements, some of which then relate to the software artifacts that will be created using machine learning. The software architecture SWE2 regulates what these are. This brings us to machine learning. Because the software artifacts will be generated by an algorithm, we need special processes to replace the classic detailed designing of software. At the top left of the V is the process used for machine learning requirements analysis. The aim of this process is to determine the special requirements of machine learning, like for instance machine learning data requirements based on the software requirements. This process is followed by architecture needed for machine learning. This revolves around the machine learning architecture that will support the training and creation of the algorithm, but also other software which may be necessary, like for example, pre- and post-processing software. And this brings us to the right-hand side of the V, the actual training of the algorithm. It's crucial that the model not only works properly, but more importantly that it meets the specified requirements. Like mentioned before, the training is a systematic approach on trial and error basis. During testing, it must then be ensured that both the trained machine learning model and ultimately the implemented machine learning model meet the specifications applicable to machine learning requirements. We distinguish here between the trained model, which has been verified, and the deployed model, which can be used in the actual software of the system. Then, all artifacts are integrated and tested together during software integration testing. This is where all of the artifacts come together, regardless of whether they are coded along traditional lines or trained using a machine learning approach. However, this still leaves one question open regarding data quality. This is the purpose of SUB11, the new support process. Machine learning data management is about defining data relevant to machine learning in accordance with machine learning data requirements and it's about safeguarding the integrity of that data. We only address this in a supporting process. However, data management is a very complex task which is often addressed by large groups within the organization. Hence, there is a separate working group which has developed an own process assessment model, data management. That was my overview of the new machine learning for Automotive Spice. With version 4.0 of Automotive Spice, machine learning becomes a part of the standard. In connection with the software developed along conventional lines, machine learning development can now be addressed from a quality point of view. This will also be a good basis for functional safety and cybersecurity. To support this video, I've also prepared a free white paper on this topic. 
You can find a link to the white paper below in the video description. If you learned something new today, give this video a thumbs up. Of course, I am also looking forward to welcoming you to one of our training courses. You can also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our other videos. Click on the video and keep on watching. See you soon. UL Solutions. Safety. Science. Transformation.